Be seated, please. Good morning. Welcome to this beautiful Sunday morning our Heavenly Father has made for us to come together as a congregation in praise, prayer, worship, song, and celebration. Now, since I are in the bulletin, just a reminder, today is the last day to order Easter flowers. Are there any other concerns from the congregation at this time? Pastor? Thank you, David. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord, the Jesus Christ. Amen. There are a number of announcements that I would like to make that have been given to me by members of the congregation. For example, uh, John Britton is still in the hospital but it's expected to be dismissed. He's had one of those hospital stays where every day you, see, you have another day where uh, they try to keep you awake to get your blood. Uh, you all know that experience, but thank and bless the doctors who are involved because without them, we would have a harder path. Also, I'd like to bring your attention to Jean Dis Bennett, who has a blood disorder, and John Barnhart, who's not here today, but he's been having some difficulties, and let's keep John in our prayers. He's, if you ever have a ch chance to visit him and talk with him, he's a veritable uh, source of information. Uh, and he knows everybody here, so there's no need to gossip, just ask John. No. Also, I'd like to draw your attention to Howard Coons, who has pneumonia, and we need to lift him up. And just because we do so here doesn't mean that we shouldn't at home. In fact, I would suggest that all the people who, whom we can pray for are people who are members of this congregation and others. But uh, let's not be limited in our prayers. Remember we talked, Rich and I, I think, and others talked about popcorn prayers. Remember those? With one of the children's sermons. And that is that we can pop up the prayer as they come to our mind and bring the concerns to our Lord. He's waiting up there on a popcorn maker. So if you, it's, a good, it's going to be a children's sermon. So who wants to volunteer to do that? Nobody yet. Okay. Also, like to uh, a uh, Krim, Mr. Krim, D D was it Davis Krim? Yes, my cousin. Your cousin Davis, Krim, who's having kidney and heart issues, and that let them. Let us raise them as well. And then, I think I have everybody. In addition to the prayers that we are lifting up here today, we're going to, did you notice that Charles Brinkman is in the uh, congregation? There he is. And they have an anniversary. 59 years Margaret has been suffering. <laughs> and he's still smiling. <laughs> okay, at this point, we've had the apostolic greeting. Let us go to the Kyrie on page 57.
David, would you lead us through the Kyrie? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together in unison the prayer of the day has printed in the bulletin. O oh Lord God, you would have us put no trust in anything we do. Mercifully grant that by your power we may be defended against all adversity. Your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus, 
morning. I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone when I ask if you'd like to read or if you're going to be in church this Sunday to read. I appreciate that when you say yes and the people that don't don't feel that this is their thing to do up here, they appreciate it also. Our first reading this morning is from Genesis, third chapter, verses 1 through 21. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of, your, eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and then that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed the fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden, in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put the enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. And to Adam he said, Because you listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I have commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The man called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skins and clothed them. Let us read responsibly Psalm 32 by verse 1 through 7. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. <clears throat> then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. Therefore, all the faithful will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. Our second reading is Romans 5, verse 12 through 19. 
Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, so death spread to all men, because all sinned. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was like, not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free, the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. For if because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, but much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation of all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteousness. Righteous. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the fourth chapter, first 11 verses. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to, again, said to him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Begone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering, ministering to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Be seated. There's a children's sermon. Are any children, would any children like to come down? Is Henry coming? Henry, oh, oh, good. Hi, Henry. Good. Come on down, buddy. There's no one else? Oh, is Molly coming? No? Okay. All right. Come on over here, Henry. How are you today? Good. It's nice and sunny out, isn't it? Yeah. Do you like to play games, Henry? You do? What kind of games do you like to play? Hi ho Cheerio. That's an awesome game. Little tiny cherries, right? In a tree. And you get to pick them and then you have to put them back, right? Yeah. Do you like any other games? Can you think of what they are? 
Count my chickens. Is that another counting game? Wow. Do you like to play games, Molly? Yeah. Can you tell me what's one of the games you like to play? Hide and seek. Do you like that, Henry? Oh, I loved hide and seek. That is pretty fun. Well, have you ever played the game Simon Says? Have you ever heard of that? Maybe you're too young. Have you ever played that, Molly? Okay, well, Simon Says is a game where you have to listen really close. And if Simon says you to do something, then you need to do it. But if Simon does not tell you to do it, then you shouldn't do it. Would you like to play this game real quick with me? Okay, stand up. Go ahead and stand up, Molly. All right, so I'm going to be Simon, and if I say Simon says, then you have to do it. But if I don't say Simon says, you can't do it. Okay? Are you ready? Got your listening ears on? All right, here we go. Simon says, raise your hand. Simon says, put your hands down. Flap your elbows. Whoa, parents, I'm impressed. That's awesome. Simon says, touch your nose. Take your finger off your nose. Oh, Simon didn't say to do it, right? Simon says, jump one time. Simon says, jump one time. <gasps> Simon says, turn around. Good. There you go. Simon says, wave to the pastor. Where's he at? <gasps> there we go. Okay, there we go. Sit down. Oh, did Simon say? No, but that's okay. So this was a little game, wasn't it, about listening and following directions. Do you ever have to follow directions in your life? Yeah, who do you have to listen to and obey? Who do you have to listen to and follow their directions? Hmm. Who do you have to listen to? And if they tell you to do something, you better do it. Hmm. Do you have to listen to Charlotte? Who? Who do you have to listen to? Yes, when daddy says don't do something, you better not do it. Is that right? For sure. Molly, is there anyone you have to listen to when they say, go do something or stop doing that? Daddy, too. Yeah, do we have to listen to mommy? Yeah, we have to listen to our mommies and daddies for sure. Well, there's someone else we have to listen to also, and that's God. God has told us what we should and shouldn't do, and we have to listen to his word, too. And we learn those rules by reading our Bibles, okay? We have to do that. Well, Jesus, a long time ago, Jesus, he had to go into the desert. He was led into the desert. And that was part of our gospel lesson. There's a lot of words in that gospel lesson, kids, and I know it's hard to hear. But you have to um, realize that Jesus was led into the desert, Henry. And when he was in there, he didn't have any food with him. What happens when you don't have any food? Do you get hungry? I get hungry. Do you ever get hungry? Yeah, well, he went up many, many days without any food, and he was really hungry. And then someone came up to tempt him to do something he shouldn't have done or shouldn't do, and that was the devil. Have you ever heard of the devil or Satan? Yeah, yeah, he's not very nice, is he? Well, he came and tried to get Jesus to do something that Jesus knew he shouldn't do. And he had to obey his father, and he talked to Satan. And you know what words he said? These are the words he said. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So when the devil tried to get Jesus to do something that he shouldn't do, Jesus talked to him, and he said God's word. And the devil went away, and he wasn't tempted to do those bad things that he know he shouldn't do. Okay?
So as we go through life, I want you to remember that sometimes we're going to be tempted to do things, and you can always pray to God, and he'll help you because he understands that we sometimes are tempted to do things that we shouldn't do, okay? Can you bow your head with me and say a prayer with me? Okay, let's bow our heads. Can you fold your hands? We'll bow our head. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus and helping us to love, serve, and obey you. Thank you for the love of Jesus. We love you, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Oh, well, I want to thank you for coming down. I have a friend in church, and her name is Mrs. Bloomfield. Do you know who her? She sits back by you, Henry, okay? And she always decorates our bulletin boards and makes our church look so pretty. And she's asked you kids to help her decorate this Easter. I'm going to give you a color page. Can you take it home this week and color it and bring it back? And your mommies and daddies can give it to Mrs. Bloomfield because she's going to hang it up in church. Would you do that for me? Yeah? Okay. Please be seated, Simon says. <laughs> May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of us, whether we're here worshiping or in the hospitals or at home. Let's pray, Simon says. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your willingness to listen to us and to give us direction so that we may actually follow your life in obedience. Thank you, Lord, for all the ways in which you love us. Thank you, and amen. As you probably know, we've been studying, uh, working our way through the Lord's Prayer and today we're on the issue of forgiveness. Forgiveness. When I first came here, within a very short period of time, several people said, oh, I could do that, but I could never forgive him for what he has done. Has done. And it's interesting because, you see, you and I can easily get trapped in the words that we say Something good was meant by that in the sense that they were willing to forgive lots of people, but they weren't really willing to forgive what Jesus Christ asked them to do. And as I'm standing here, I realize that I need your forgiveness because we have to actually work our way through this text in a way that hopefully will make some sense. 
And here is Mr. Reinhardt leaving, and without having had anyone say anything, and I'm sure that at this point, if he were here, he would join us in singing happy birthday to Jen. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jen. Happy birthday to you. And now turn with me to Matthew chapter 6, verses 12. Give us this day our daily bread, and we dealt with that last week. And forgive us our debts, or as we often say, forgive us our transgressions. And as we also have forgiven our debtors. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also give, forgive you. But if you do not forgive, wow, others, the, the treasures, neither will your Father forgive your trespass. We'll come back to that and hopefully make it a little clearer. Not that the Matthews, Jesus' words weren't clear. It's that I wasn't clear. And so if we turn to Matthew chapter 18, we find the forgiving servant. Remember the story? It was a parable that Jesus told. And the parable that he told is that you and I are like this slave who comes and uh, owes an awful lot of money. And you who have used money in the past, who have struggled with keeping the funds correct in your life, you and I know that sometimes it's very difficult to repay. I would rather forget. Maybe they'll make a mistake in the computerized world that we're in. But no, he says here in this particular parable that Jesus is saying here is that you and I, just like this slave, are asking for forgiveness. We're asking for God to forgive us. And the way this is played out is that the servant who owes the money is finds out that the, the uh, boss, his mentor and boss, find out that they, in fact, are also unwilling to forgive. How did that happen? Well, it was e relatively easy. The boss sees the slave there and who's ready to grab him by the throat and say, you haven't paid back what you owe me. And the servant had a soft heart and he forgave the slave all of the money that was owed. And he's happy. Who wouldn't be happy if that happened? When I was in seminary, I wasn't, didn't have a lot of money. And uh, my teacher from, from high school, a teacher from high school, wrote me a note and said, you know, the loan that I gave you for your car, it's wiped out. You're free. Wow, what a gift that was. And to this day, I have a picture of him handing in my study. What a gift that was. But here, the, the servant, the slave, after he has been forgiven, what does he do? The slave finds a way of getting the other slave to owe him what he owns. In other words, he acts exactly contrary to the way Jesus pictured the duty and the responsibility of the slave. And remember what happens here is that Peter goes to Jesus and says, then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him as many as seven times? And Jesus said to him, 
I do not say to you seven times, but seventy-seven times. In other words, a huge amount of money. But Peter has got it all wrong. You see, forgiveness is a matter is not a matter of the head. He, uh, Peter was trying to basically say to Jesus, how many times must I forgive? And Jesus says, it's not a matter of arithmetic. It's a matter of the heart. It's not a matter where we can sit back and say, oh yeah, I can calculate that. And I can calculate that so it comes out in my favor. No. If we're stuck in the arithmetic of forgiveness, we will never be able to freely follow our Lord. Let us then remember that if it's a matter of the heart, then we need to forgive as we have been forgiven. Can I say that again? If it's a matter of the arithmetic, then we will never reach the forgiveness. Why? Because as the uh, Lord's Prayer states, but what you need before you ask him, pray then like this, you will be done. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts. And as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation, for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Is there anyone in this congregation who has carried a bitterness in their heart because they were purely dealing with arithmetic rather than the heart, matter of the heart? Do you see, do you see the difficulty here? Here it is. We are challenged by our Lord to forgive. But it doesn't stop there. Because you and I are also challenged to remind one another that the forgiveness that we receive from Jesus is a forgiveness that can only come after you and I have forgiven those who are in our congregation. Does that make sense to you? Doesn't make any sense to me. I don't want to have any conditions on the love that God will shower upon me and my family and our congregation. But it's absolutely clear, for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. You see the if in there? If is a terrible word in this context. For if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Huh. Do you like that? Simon says it does. Ready for the Nicene Creed? Last verse. Last verse. Last verse. Will you forgive me? Please rise.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. <coughs> he ascended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we know that you discipline those you love and guide sinners in doing what is right. Take away our selfish wills so that we might live according to our divine will. Open our ears to you, hear your speaking to us so that we would repent from seeking our own ways and turn to you for forgiveness and mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, as we travel this Lenten journey to, be, to the cross, we are mindful of your mercy and grace. Through your spirit, inspire us to hunger for your word of life and teach us to show forth in our lives what we confess with our lips. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, open our hearts and enter in that we may see those in need and care about them in that need, that we may gather ourselves to reach out in friendship and prayer to give us as we have received. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> God of compassion, we wait upon your mercy, trusting you never forget us. Give hope to all who wait in patience and faith in the midst of troubled times. Be with them in their time of need and remind them of your promise that neither height or death, death or life, nor anything else in all creation 
we'll be able to separate us from your love in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bow our heads and prepare our hearts and minds for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord.